Right, hi there, welcome back. Now, for Sunday's video this week, I want to test a little something that I am consistently being warned about regarding my lithium ion battery. If you've been watching the fighter build for the last couple of years, you'll know that recently I chose to go with a lithium ion battery for the build. For a couple of reasons, really. It's super lightweight and it's smaller and more compact. And as I've been saying all along, I want that tail structure to be as tiny and compact as possible, and this battery's helping me with that. But I'm hearing from so many of you that I need to be really careful because my battery box that I've made is fully enclosed. It's a steel structure, it's a structural part of the undertail, and I really need the strength of it. Lots of you are saying you should drill that out, you should cut the sides out of it so that this can dissipate heat. One of you even recently said, and I want to thank you for this, mate. You said it gets so hot, they need a fan on them and they can possibly, even in extreme cases, catch fire. Now, when I hear that kind of thing, it does worry me. I am ever happy to listen to what you know and what you've done yourself. So if you feel that that's correct, I think I should at least test it. So for Tony's video today, I'm gonna to test my lithium ion battery and um, see if I can overheat it. Now, I've spoken to the guys at Wimoto that I've got it from and said, do they actually get too hot? Do you need to put cooling fans on them and so on? And the guys there said, not really sure because they've only just got into lithium batteries and they are indeed very interested in the results of this video as well. So to all the guys at Wimoto, I hope you're watching, this is gonna be what happens to one of these. Now we know they're bone dry. There's nothing inside them. There's no liquid in there. They weigh enough to have anything in them other than a bit of matting or something, but whatever it is, when anything's dry, it is more prone to get hot. As we know, our mobile phones get really hot when we're charging them, so it's the same sort of principle, I think. I want to be guided by you as well, because I really don't know a great deal about these. I'm learning as I go, as I am with a great deal of the stuff on the fighter build. So today, the experiment is going to be two things. I'm going to connect this up to a little test rig with a halogen headlight bulb and leave it burning, connected, for about five minutes and see, wrapped up and insulated as it would be in the battery box, how hot it gets using the laser thermometer before and after so you can see the results for yourself. After that, we'll disconnect all that and I'm gonna put it on charge. I'm gonna connect it up to a proper battery charger, a lithium dedicated battery charger that I got from Sealy and we're gonna put it on charge, wrapped up for about half an hour and test the temperature of it, see how hot it gets and you will see the results for yourself. So let's stop talking, shall we Pen? Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, the first job is to insulate it to ridiculous levels. So let's bung it in this big old wrap of cloth like that. So that it insulates all the heat, keeps it all packed inside. Okay, I think we can say that that's insulated. <laughs> there we are. So that's not gonna lose any heat whatsoever through the sides and it's sitting on this on the table so there's no ventilation around that whatsoever. I'm going to use for the purpose of connecting it, this is not plugged into the battery charger, I'm going to use that to just connect the test rig up and what I've done, don't laugh, <laughs> as I've used to watch Blue Peter, this is for what I just, I haven't got anything better than this at the moment, but that's a standard 5560 watt headlight bulb from uh, any, any motorcycle you like. And I'm gonna mount it that way around so it doesn't completely blind you. <laughs> and we'll connect that up to the battery. Three, two, one. And there it is. Now, time now, we are 25 to seven at night and we're gonna leave that for I reckon 15 minutes. So that will represent that you've left your battery on, your ignition on with your headlight on for 15 minutes. But before we do anything, what's most important is to test the temperature of that battery. First of all, temperature in here, as you can see there, Pen, 20 degrees. Can you catch that? Yep, there you go. 20 degrees centigrade in here, which for our American friends is what, 64 Fahrenheit. I'm gonna just test the heat of that. 22 degrees. So the battery itself, the casing on the outside is only marginally hotter in the atmosphere in here. And we'll leave that if there's any, or because this is insulated the way it is, if there's any heat build up inside that battery, it's gonna come out the top. It's gonna to radiate out through there because that's the only exit. So let's leave it there. We'll drain 10, 15 minutes. 15. 15 minutes, we'll come back and we'll see what state that's in. Right. Okay. Surprising results so far. I want to show you first of all, it might not look like a halogen bulb, but I'm just trying to save you from being blinded. Look, it is a proper, is bright. proper bright bulb and a 55 watt halogen bulb 
sucking power out of that for the last 15 minutes. And temperature, surprisingly, what have we got here? 20. 20 degrees. It has cooled off a little. Now, I don't think that's anything to do with the process of using it to draw power because the temperature in here, it's evening time now, quarter seven at night, and then there it has cooled off to 19 degrees. So the room temperature's dropped a degree in the last quarter of an hour, so so is that. So it is basically followed room temperature. That is not getting hot at all in any way. If I just disconnect that, oh, that's better. You can see now. Your stars. <laughs> <laughs> so get rid of that out of the way. We now know clearly that there's no way, I'm going to test it underneath. 20 degrees on top. Same. Um, even the terminals. 19, obviously being metal. 19. That has not got any hotter at all whatsoever. That is still stone cold for having loads of power drawn out of it. So that's fine. Next test charging it. So what I've got to do is connect it up now to the charger. Now I want to make it clear at this point, if you're going to use a lithium ion battery, they need special battery chargers. They need a dedicated lithium ion battery charger. Now I've got the Sealy one, which is convertible. It gives me both. So you get the lithium option or the lead acid option. So make sure that when you charge one of these, you read the instructions. It does give you all instructions about charging them. So I'm gonna follow those instructions to the T so we are absolutely giving it a fair test. We connect it up to the charger. Whatever order, I'm gonna switch it on. Okay, that's charging 89%. Before I started, this was when, when we started before, I don't know before we started the video, this was charging at 98%, it was fully charged. So 15 minutes with that bulb connected, that's taken a bit out of it, as you'd imagine it would. But we'll start temperature, 20 degrees again. There we are, and as you can see, fully insulated, wrapped in all that wadding, in a room, a warm room environment, connected up, relevant amount of power going in that's no more power than the bikes alternator would put into it in use let's see how hot that gets we're going to come back at five minute intervals Where's my tea? right a few minutes in five two it's about three minutes 19 no heat not heating up at all still room temperature let's keep going right Five more minutes. 20 degrees, 20.4. It's just raised a little tiny bit, but obviously it's not gonna go up a significant amount in the next five minutes. So we'll leave this for half an hour, which will represent a half hour ride on your bike, for instance. And then that would have been, if it's gonna get hot, it will get hot in that time. If it won't, it won't. Let's see, see you in half an hour. Right, here we are, 40 minutes on charge. 22 degrees. Are we up in? See that? We can. We can, right. So 22 degrees is only marginally warmer than room temperature. We are at 19 degrees in here now. Just take that off. Let's take this off. Got another thought. Take that off there, all the insulation off it. And let's check the side. Now the side is 20, and yet the top, 21. It's obviously cooling off a little. Now, I think that's probably because the sides have been insulated where nothing can get out. So any heat coming out is coming out the top, I don't know. But basically, it didn't get hot at all, did it? You think about it. If that got to 90 degrees and it was hot to the touch, I can understand it. But that is, that is room temperature, basically, and it's been on charge for 40 odd minutes. That, as I said, represents a 40 minute ride up the road. The, the bike's alternator is pumping power in, it's encased in the battery tray, and it is at the same temperature as the surroundings. Now, obviously, there are other factors playing a part. When it's on your bike and you're riding up the road, there is all that heat, that ambient heat around it, especially on a fared bike. You get a sports bike, for instance, you've got all the heat coming out the fairing, coming up under the tailpiece, the heat from the exhaust, everything bleeding up around it, doing everything it can to cook the battery. But I think we've proved at least one thing, and that is that the battery itself doesn't internally generate any heat from being charged by the alternator. It may well 
because it hasn't got any liquid in it, it may suffer from that heat more than a liquid battery does. I don't know. And why the batteries that you have set out there get so hot that they need fans on and they can catch fire, I don't know. There could be one theory that I'm possibly thinking, and that is that these batteries give a warning that you must they must be charged between a, a maximum of 14 to 15 volts. Now, obviously, if you've got an incompatible charging system, you could cause a problem because not all motorcycles charging systems are compatible with lithium batteries. If you look for a lithium battery on the market for your bike and you can't find one, it's quite possible that your bike isn't compatible with them. So that's the best way. If you're gonna buy a lithium ion battery for your bike, buy the absolutely correct one for your bike that is approved for it. Because that means that the manufacturers have tested it and they've made sure that it's compatible with your charging system. Because not only will you damage the battery, which isn't the worst in the world, but you could damage the charging system of your bike and cause all kinds of problems. So only buy a lithium ion battery if it is applicable to your motorcycle. And it could be that people have put the wrong batteries or put them on bikes that are not compatible. And that's where this generation of massive heat has come from. I don't know. I will be corrected by you who do know. But for today, in this test, with this battery on this bench, wrapped in this big sheet, it didn't get any hotter under all the conditions I can possibly put it through. Yes, I could have belted loads of power onto it. I could have put an Arctic with a spanner, but that's not correct. That's not how it's ever gonna be used. The headlight test was to say, you've left your ignition on, you've left the headlight on, and we left it on there for 15 minutes, and it took probably 20% of the power out of the battery, and it stayed room temperature, and we charged it for 40 minutes, pumping all that power back in, and it stayed room temperature. So I'd like to say that I'm happy to put that on my bike in my steel battery tray. However, nevertheless, because of all the warnings, I will be keeping a very severe eye on it. I won't have the facility to put a fan on it, but I will possibly vent that box a little bit more. I don't know, but as we've said before, I'm gonna be doing the undersea exhaust, which will involve a great deal of insulation from heat and all that's all part of the later project. But I think today, that's a good little test. I'm happy with that. I'm hoping that that also helps the guys at Wimoto to learn a little bit about them too, because they're getting into these for the first time. They're now supplying them as well, a link underneath. And I think that, how do pit stop wraps it up, don't you? Have a wonderful Sunday. Have a wonderful Sunday indeed. Thank you for watching Tazy Ride Safe, whatever battery you have. See you next time.